Hey guys, my name is Violet and today we're going to be covering the AP Calculus BC topic of improper integrals and how to solve them. These include discontinuous integrands and infinite intervals. So let's get started. Let's get some definitions out of the way. We'll call an integral convergent if the associated limit exists and is a finite number and divergent if the associated limit either doesn't exist or is plus or minus infinity. When evaluating improper integrals, you'll often be asked to determine if the integral is convergent or divergent, and if convergent, to find its value. The first type of improper integral that we're going to be looking at is one with infinite interval, where one or both limits of integration are infinity. There are essentially three cases that we'll need to know. The first is that if the integral of a to the t of f of x dx exists for every t is greater than a, then the integral of a to infinity of f of x dx is equal to the limit of t approaches infinity of the integral of a to the t of f of x dx, provided that the limit exists and is finite. The second is that if the integral from t to b of f of x dx exists for every t is less than b, then the integral from negative infinity to b of f of x dx is equal to the limit of t approaches negative infinity of the integral from t to b of f of x dx, provided that the limit exists and is finite. The third is that if the integral from negative infinity to c of f of x dx and the integral from c to infinity of f of x dx are both convergent, then the integral from negative infinity to infinity of f of x dx is equal to the integral from negative infinity to c of f of x dx plus the integral from c to infinity of f of x dx, where c is any number. This requires both of the integrals to be convergent in order for this integral to be convergent. If either of the two integrals is divergent, then so is this integral. So now let's try an example problem. We're going to be taking the improper integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx, and we can see this matches our first general case. So we can take the limit of t approaches infinity on the interval 1 to t of 1 over x squared dx. From here, we can solve it normally. We'll anti-differentiate 1 over x squared to get negative 1 over x from 1 to t. Then we can plug in the variables to get 1 minus 1 over t, and because the limit of t approaches infinity of 1 over t is 0, we're just going to get the answer 1. However, improper integrals don't always converge to a number. For our next example, we're going to be taking the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. And the first thing we're going to do again is convert the integral to a limit, which gives us lim t approaches infinity on the integral 1 to t of 1 over x dx. And now we can just take the antiderivative of 1 over x, which is ln x, from 1 to t, which gives us the limit of t approaches infinity of ln t minus ln 1, which gives us infinity, meaning the integral is divergent. So for our last example problem, we're going to be taking the integral from negative infinity to infinity of x e to the negative x squared dx, which I'm just going to call f of x for convenience. In this case, we've got infinities in both limits, so we need to split the integral up into two separate integrals. We can split them up at any point, so I'm going to choose x equals 0 for convenience. And now we have to look at both of those individually. For the first one on the left side, we're going to be getting the limit of t approaches negative infinity of the integral t to 0 of f of x dx. We'll take the antiderivative of f of x to get negative 1 half e to the negative x squared from t to 0. Once we plug in those values, we'll get negative 1 half plus 1 half e to the negative t squared. And we'll take the limit of t approaches negative infinity to get negative 1 half, meaning the first integral is convergent. So now we're just going to do the same process with the second integral since it's the same function, meaning it's the same antiderivative from 0 to t, except this time t is going to approach infinity. We end up with 1 half, so that means the second integral is also convergent, and then we can just add up the two values to get negative 1 half plus 1 half, which is just 0. Okay, so now we're going to look at improper integrals with discontinuous integrands. These are basically the same with a subtle difference, and they have four general cases. The first is that if f of x is continuous on the closed interval a to the open interval b and not continuous at x equals b, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the left-handed limit of the integral a to t of f of x dx, provided that the limit exists and is finite. The second case is that if f of x is continuous on the open interval a to the closed interval b and not continuous at x equals a, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the right-handed limit of the integral of t to b of f of x dx, provided that the limit exists and is finite. In the third case, if f of x is not continuous at x equals c, where a is less than c is less than b, and the integral from a to c of f of x dx and the integral from c to b of f of x dx are both convergent, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to the integral from a to c f of x dx plus the integral from c to b of f of x dx. 
The fourth is that if f of x is not continuous at x equals a and x equals b, and if the integral from a to c of f of x dx and the integral from c to b of f of x dx are both convergent, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx equals the integral from a to c of f of x dx plus the integral from c to b of f of x dx, where c is any number. So now let's try some example problems with discontinuous integrands. We're going to start with the integral from 0 to 3 of 1 over the square root of 3 minus x dx. The problem point here is the upper limit, so we're going to use the first case we described before. We're going to use the left-hand limit since the integral of integration is entirely on the left side of the upper limit. So we're going to get the left-hand limit of t approaches 3 on the integral 0 to t of the function. We're going to take the antiderivative of the function to get negative 2 square root of 3 minus x from 0 to t, and we're going to plug that in and do t approaches 3 from the left-hand side to get the answer 2 square root of 3. So the limit exists and is finite, so the integral converges and is 2 square root of 3. So for our last example problem, we're going to do the integral from negative 2 to 3 of 1 over x cubed dx. This integrand is not continuous at x equals 0, so we'll need to split up the integral at that point. So we're going to get the integral from negative 2 to 0 of 1 over x cubed dx, plus the integral from 0 to 3 of 1 over x cubed dx. Now we're going to solve each integral individually. We're going to start with the first one, and we're going to get the left-hand limit of t approaches 0 from negative 2 to t of the function, which we're just going to take the antiderivative from from negative 2 to t. And once we plug in the variables, we're going to get negative 1 over t, 2t squared plus 1 8. And once we do t approaches 0 from the left-hand side, we get negative infinity, meaning the integral is divergent, meaning the original integral is also divergent, and that's it. It's divergent. And that's an overview on improper integrals. Thank you for watching.